Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's tutorial is all about creating an RGB color slider using JavaScript. As you all might know, RGB stands for red, green and blue and together they form the basis of all colors we see on our screens. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a user-friendly color picker tool using range sliders to adjust the values of red, green and blue. I'll walk you through step by step how to write the JavaScript code to update the color values as the sliders are adjusted, display the selected color in RGB format and even copy the color code to, for, to your clipboard. This is a great project for anyone who is interested in web development and by the end of this project you will have a fully functional RGB color picker that you can use in your own projects. So let's get started. We start by creating a container div which holds our elements. Inside the container we have three color sliders red, green and blue. Each of these inputs come with a label and a corresponding input tag. The input tag has a minimum value and a maximum value and a default value. The default value is represented by the attribute value. In this case, we set the default value of the range sliders to 0. Now you have to be careful that the for attribute of label and id attribute of the input are exact same. Now let me copy this lines of code to save time. I am doing this using shift alt and downward arrow in VS code. Now all I have to do is content of the labels and id of the input elements uh, yeah and we also have to change the for attribute of the label element setting the minimum value of sliders to 0 and maximum value to 255 allows the slider to adjust the values of each color component between 0 to 255 we also have a result div that will show the final rgb color code and a button to copy the code to the clipboard. We add a read-only attribute to the input element so that the user cannot change the text content of the input. Now we move on to the CSS code. We start by selecting all the elements using the universal selector. We start by removing the paddings and margins of all the elements that may be added to the elements by default. We also set the box sizing to border box. This means that the width and height of the box includes the content, padding and border so that the total size of element matches the specified width and height. We have some styling for the container div and its child elements. Let me add a border just so the container div is highlighted. We set the background color for container to white. We also set the width to minimum of 90% and 31.25 em which whichever one is smaller will get applied as the width of the container. Next we use the transform property along with position absolute to center the container both horizontally and vertically. We use the transform property along with top and left property. We set the color to a dark blue color which is almost uh, similar to black. We also give it a border radius of 0.5 em and add a box shadow to make it stand out from the background.
We use the grid layout along with justify content center to center the items inside the container horizontally. So by mistake here I have written place item center. Let me just go back and delete it and write justify content center. Inside the container, we have a wrapper class that holds each color slider and its label. We give the wrapper a width of 100% and use flex box to align the label and the slider elements. We also add some margin to separate the wrappers from each other. We add this margin at the bottom. For the label elements, we set the font size to 1.8 em, which is larger than the default font size. Let me go back and adjust the margin bottoms a little bit. This seems to be perfect. Now coming to the input type slider or as we call it input type range. We set the width to 100%. The result div is styled to display the final RGB color code and the copy button next to each other in a grid layout. We also set the font size for the input type text and button elements and give them border radius and no border. We also remove the outline from both the input type text and the button. Now we use the selection pseudo class to set the selection color to transparent. So let me just comment this out and show you how it looks without setting the trans uh, setting it to transparent. And here we get this blue color. So by just setting it the background color to transparent. We get rid of the blue color that was originally displayed. Let's include the external script file inside our HTML code. We do this by using the script tag. Now let us move on to the JavaScript code. First, we are using document.query selector function to select the input element that is inside an element with the class of result. We are then assigning that element to a variable called result. 
This will allow us to access and manipulate the input element later on. Moving on, we use document dot get element by ID. To select the element with the ID copy button, we are assigning this element to the variable copy button. This will come in handy when we want to perform actions on the copy element. I mean copy button element. Next, we use document dot query selector all to select all the input elements with the type range that are inside the elements with the class wrapper. We are assigning these elements to the variable sliders. This allows us to work with all the range slider elements together. Moving forward, we encounter const r color equal to document dot get element by id red. So what this line of code does is select the respect element with respective id and assign it to the variable r color. So we do the same for green and blue. Next we have the generate color function. This function is responsible for generating the RGB color code based on the values of color sliders. We get the current values of the input sliders using the value property. We do the same for R color, G color and B color and assign them to variables that are called R color value, B color value and sorry G color value and B color value respectively. The order doesn't matter here. I'm just doing it for convention. Fixed it. Now we create a variable called final color and assign it a template literal. This template literal consists of values of R color, G color and B color which have been stored in R color value, G color value and B color value respectively. If you would like to learn more about template literals, drop a comment below. Next, we set the value of result input field to the generated color and update the background color of the page to the same color. Uh, we try changing the values but nothing changes. Let me go and check the console log. So there are no errors here. Okay, so we have probably not included a event listener that would call the function. So let me go and add a click event listener. Um, actually, we won't be adding a click event listener. Here in this case, we will be iterating through all the sliders and adding uh, the input event listener to each one of them. So whenever we try to input any value on any of those sliders the generate the generate color function will be called still there is no change so let me go and check so instead of type equal to range i have used type equal to text please do fix this changes with me as you can see now the values are now changing as I move the sliders that means our function is working properly next let me set the uh, background color of the body to the same color that we have obtained by changing the sliders
next we add a load event listener to the window this makes sure that the value of the uh, slider is updated as soon as the window loads finally we create the copy color code function so basically what this function does is select the input and then execute a copy command on it it also this function also changes the text of the copy button briefly to indicate that the color code has been copied uh, to change this text briefly we are using the set timeout function which is set to a time of 1000 milliseconds which is equal to 1 second finally we add a event listener to the copy button using the add event listener function this listener calls the copy color code function when the button is clicked additionally we call the generate color function when the window loads to set the initial color based on the default slider values now let me go back to the css code and remove the uh, border that i had used to highlight the container So that's it for today's tutorial. Thank you for watching this tutorial on creating an RGB color slider using JavaScript. I hope you found it informative and helpful in expanding your knowledge of web development. Remember, practice makes you perfect. So try experimenting with the code on your own and customize it to fit your project needs. Don't forget forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Happy coding.